can I can I put that one onto you as well? Because your work is is that overarching big picture, and yet underneath all of that is this these layers of complexity and the question about whether the goals that where you can put ticks alongside the box say yes we've done this, but have you really done that? Because you know while you can measure an achievement at core, you haven't changed something fundamental in social political structures to embed it, to, to make things better over, over the longer term. Is that something that you wrestle with in this process? Uh, we do uh, all, every time and every decision uh, will be uh, assessed against you know, the complexity of, of the problems. There is no e easy answer to those questions. Uh, there is uh, the Paris Declaration, which is a commitment from all countries to align their assistance uh, with the priorities of, of, of countries, of national governments, uh, of uh, a commitment to better harmonization of aid among donors, etc. And this is something that uh, countries, developed countries, have committed to. Uh, having said that, uh, one has to recognize that there are extreme cases, that, like the ones that have been mentioned here, where, uh, you know, in good conscience, uh, you ask yourself whether uh, this is something that uh, this is a direction in which you want to, to go to. Uh, from the perspective of United Nations, uh, governments are responsible to their own citizens and this is the process that one would have to enforce. Development is about the strengthening of institutions, national institutions, and about account accountability to the citizens. And uh, part of the effort is uh, perhaps to strengthen that process of uh, citizens, uh, citizenship participation and accountability of governments to their own uh, uh, to their own national processes, and there is a lot that can be done in that direction, and there is a lot that countries are doing in that direction, even uh, in the most difficult uh, uh, countries where issues of gover governance are really uh, challenging. There is always mechanisms to deliver aid in a way which is effective and in a way that will make a difference to uh, uh, the vulnerable out there. And nowadays we have uh, so much innovation in the way the private sector, the NGOs, governments are delivering assistance that uh, it is hard to think of a situation where aid cannot be delivered effectively. Thanks, Jana. Kevin, can I just ask you to reflect on that too? Because I know that uh, and I don't want to put you in a difficult position with any particular country, but I know a certain country to our north is very vexing on, on all of these issues. It's, it's really a very good example of these complexities, isn't it? Papua Japan's not like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> if the economy keeps going the way it is, it may well be. But Papua New Guinea, of course, you've, you've said things in public standing alongside Michael Samare about some of the very tough issues to do with development assistance mm. to, to his country. Um, Let me so put it in these terms. Um, one, life's not perfect. Um, if we waited for the perfect, uh, it would permanently destroy doing that which is good. It's simply like that. Uh, life's an imperfect institution and so is uh, the enterprise in which we're all engaged in here. And if we waited for perfection, uh, we would do nothing. That's the bottom line. Secondly, Bearing in mind what's just been said, though, about how you achieve, sorry, so the optimal outcomes in countries given all the constraints, here are some principles. One, the Paris Declaration's principles are maximum harmonisation between our development objectives and the developed objectives incorporated within national governments. Uh, two, to maximise um, aid coordination with all donors. And three, one of my own, is to maximise measurement while recognising, as has been said before, uh, the impediments which underpin measurement. But some measurement is better than no measurement. Let me just go through those three and how we've sought to apply them in a region very close to us. 25% of Australia's ODA goes to the Pacific Island countries. That's a large slice of cash each year. That's more than a billion bucks. Um, and it's not just PNG, it's the other Pacific Island countries, um, 13 of our, of our nearest neighbours. In the period um, that um, I was Prime Minister, our first priority was to redesign fundamentally each of our development assistance relationships with all 13 of the PICs, Pacific Island countries. 
We call them Pacific Partnerships for Development, which is what Ursula referred to before. What are they? The first time we apply the MDG matrix to our bilateral development assistance programs with each Pacific Island country. Each of those applied to Kiribati, each of those applied to the Solomons uh, and the measures. <coughs> Secondly, um, what we've sought to do through the Cairns Compact, uh, which we achieved last year, uh, which was a, quite a difficult thing to get agreed, is agreement on the part of all developed country donors to the Pacific Island countries to be transparent about their aid programs through the, for, through the Forum Secretariat of the Pacific Island countries. Prior to that, they weren't. So whether it's United States, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Korea, the European Union and others, there is now a transparent declaration process through the Pacific Island Forum Secretariat about who's giving how much to whom and on what. That is the first step to what I, what I describe as more effective coordination program by program on the ground as well. Uh, by the way, a subset of that, we're now mutually auspicing the aid delivery agencies of Australia and the European Union. So the European Union wants to invest cash for development purposes in the Pacific. They will auspice us. Well, they may choose to. In Africa, where we are thinner on the ground but still committed, um, we uh, will be auspicing the European Union to be a uh, delivery agency for us in many parts of Africa. It's a smart way to go. The third thing, though, is about um, measurement. And against these MDGs, we have now annual report cards, which is um, owned by the Pacific Island countries, whereby they and us report each year against uh, the MDG targets. This gives us confidence that this is being owned effectively locally. It's being declared back to the donor community here in Australia, and we have therefore some measure of success. Um, governance, of course, is dealt with to the extent that it is owned by the national systems of development with, with whom we partner. I conclude where I began, however. If we were to wait around uh, for acceptable levels of governance, uh, in the countries to whom we provide development assistance and humanitarian assistance, let me tell you, um, we would not be spending much, okay? Because there are problems everywhere on the governance front. Let's just be frank about it and work within it. Thanks, Kevin. And uh, Mr. Rudd has to leave us now, so if you'd uh, join me in thanking him for being here. For I can take that for you if you like. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, um, we um, still have a lot to talk about, I think, within all of that. And um, if I can uh, just ask Scott uh, to perhaps pick up on some of what Mr. Rudd was saying, the politician's view is uh, we have to deal in the real world and we can't wait around. Um, is that good enough? Now that he's out of the room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just be uh, careful, Ursula's right next to you. <laughs> no, it's, uh, actually, he's absolutely right that, um, and, it, and it's in some sense a philosophical question, that uh, we, we definitely can't have the perfect, and we can't have that be the enemy of the good, but we can have standards and principles and processes in place that allow for active citizens to try and secure their rights in the, 